is the open source 3D printed RC dump truck that solves the problem of too much desk clutter. Extra pens laying around, gone. Electronic leftovers from your previous project, gone. Your 3D printer is producing waste pellets that are totally cramping your style, gone. Now while Mini Dump Truck 1.0 is pretty good, there's definitely some room for improvement. First is headlights. Not only is this something that will add a ton of character to the project, but it's something that's been heavily requested by you, the audience. Now all of the design files for these projects are open source and can be found on printables and GitHub. So if you finish this project and you're just like, well gee diddly, I don't know what I'm gonna do if I don't get me one of those Mini Dump Trucks, you know where to start and you can start printing your Mini Dump Truck ASAP. Though if you're not quite confident in sourcing all of the electrical like electrical components yet, I totally get that. So I threw together some kits that come with everything you need minus the battery and charger. And this is primarily what funds the development of these DIY 3D printed projects. So it's a great way to support the channel. Now the second upgrade or addition I have for the mini dump truck is a hitching system to pull a trailer. Now I know that mine haul trucks don't normally pull trailers except for these few exceptions where they completely remove the dump bed. But as it stands, compared to the mini skiddy, the dump truck might as well be equipped with dual turbochargers and a flame sticker because it's about four times as fast, if not faster. So for the time being, I'd like it to have the additional ability to haul a trailer. Even though it's not really equipped power-wise to haul a trailer for a very long distance, I still think it's gonna be feasible. So that's one of the goals we're gonna try and accomplish. Before we can make any upgrades or additions to this, we first need to solve a very large list of problems that plague the original model. And trust me, the list is long. Starting with the printed circuit board, the total length required it to be jam-packed inside of the mini dump truck, which would cause the steering linkage to bind, as well as just made it a real pain to make any adjustments. So I move some parts around on the circuit board, the most notable being two of the five auxiliary pin switch sets. I moved them to the back of the board, which allowed me to bring one of these terminal blocks up to the top, making it way easier to screw in the motor. And then along with that, I also moved the switch to the other side of the PCB. That way you're not doing a weird finger limbo trying to dodge the dump bed while also turning on the mini dump truck. So that was more practical of the movements, as well as a multitude of other changes. All in all, I ended up saving about four millimeters of space, which should hopefully give us an edge in terms of actually being able to route wires down around the steering linkage as well as just making it a little bit easier to make any adjustments. Now while I wait for the updated printed circuit board to show up, I'm going to attempt to try tackling the steering linkage one last time to really make it just while it's pretty close to being smooth, the gap between the steering knuckle and hub is just a little bit too large, causing the wheel to kind of wobble back and forth. The steering bar itself just has way too much play in it. I'm sure you can actually see it. But I'm just like barely applying any pressure and I'm able to bend these against, you know, they're not supposed to be able to bend like that, that's bad. With the steering linkage adjusted, I can now say that I'm confident in this part of the model. Just make sure when you go to print these parts that your bed is set to the perfect height level as any kind of compressed first layer could potentially cause some rubbing issues as the tolerances are really small. Some other noteworthy adjustments I made were securing the front bumper with two screws rather than one, made the motor pinion gear gap larger, added guide posts for wire management, and made the rear tires more 3D printer friendly. If you've already printed out the parts for Mini Dump Truck 1.0 and you're just waiting on electronics, I'm sorry, but I would definitely recommend printing out the parts for Mini Dump Truck 2.0, as it might save you a lot of headache down the road, as well as just make it way easier to assemble everything. With that, let's move on to something a little bit more exciting, what you're all here for, and that is um, some spectacular headlights. Now, I debated back and forth whether or not I was actually gonna do this, as every time I searched RC headlights, I'd always get faced with something that was one, too large for the scale I was going for, and two, was unproportionately more expensive than the rest of the parts required to build a mini dump truck. But that's when I got struck, once again, by the wisdom of a middle school teacher. Right, here's some uh, LED diodes that are not unlike every LED that comes in any Arduino kit ever. The main difference being that they already have wires pre-soldered on for your convenience. And two, they have an inline resistor. Now these came in a pack of 100 for around nine bucks, so I'll take it. Versus everything else I could find was like a pack of two for 30 bucks. In terms of mounting these LEDs to the dump truck, you can either one, 3D print these five millimeter LED mounting light brackets, or you can pick up a pack of what I'm assuming are injection molded clips for super cheap. Now the reason why I went with these instead of 3D printing my own are just because one, I really want these to be standardized as I'll be 
case, shipping them with all of the kits. And they're also just a little bit more durable than what you can expect from a print that would be this thin made of PLA or PETG. Now originally I was thinking I'd connect these wires via one of the aux pins on our printed circuit board, but then the thought struck me, well, if anybody wants to upgrade their light setup, say to like a super high powered RC light bar, chances are it's going to pull more than 40 milliamps. Just alone, each one of these pulled 20 milliamps. And an ESP32 can only realistically sustain about 40 milliamps of power off of one of the output pins. So using the extra terminal block coming off of our H bridge, I'm gonna go ahead and route my lights into those, as those can realistically sustain up to one amp of power, which would be some really bright RC headlights. Not that I recommend doing that. But for reference, you could probably wire up like 10 of these and be just fine. Now for the mounting location, I'm thinking just kind of exactly where headlights would normally go. So one right here and another right here, and I think that's just gonna be All right, I've got the headlights in and the hood back on the dump truck, and I just have to say that my, my, this looks just excellent. So, definitely should've listened to you guys sooner on the whole headlights thing, but we're here now, and mm, test number one, I've got the dump truck on, I got my controller out. Okay, I'm back. Test number two, I'm pretty sure I had it wired backwards, so uh, let's give this one more try. Uh... It's always a code issue, except for when it isn't. But I feel like with these little things, it always is. The reason things went terribly, terribly wrong is because I left this little piece of code right here just laying around, even though it doesn't do anything. Um, so yeah, be better than me. And now that I actually have the pins assigned to the right auxiliary terminal block coming off of the H bridge, we should be good to go. So round three, let's get it done. Test three people, this is for all the marbles. We've got our, okay, I gotta hold this right. We've got our controller here, we got our dump truck. Ooh. Mm, would you just, would you just look at that? I don't know how well this shows up because it's pretty bright right here, but if you hold down the button, you get a nice little flashing effect, you know? But I'd say that's pretty legit. So as you can see, there's a lot of light coming through this white PLA around the LED, and I personally think this looks kind of cool in the dark, but if you want to get rid of that, I'm assuming if you just wrap the light assembly with like a little bit of aluminum foil, or just something to keep the light from penetrating, that would probably do the trick. But on the controller side of things, as you can see from the previous 1.0 version of this, I added an additional auxiliary button, so that basically this one on the right, aux one, that's our headlights, and then aux two, that can be bound to whatever you like. So if you want to put a horn on the mini dump truck, or if you want to add an additional Additional servo to run something like a plow um, that is totally up to you and you can bind it to that extra button or you can add more buttons everything's open source that's the beauty of these projects and now it's time for major upgrade at number two and that's adding a trailer so adding the hitch for the trailer should be relatively simple as I think we can just piggyback right off of the dump bed mechanism but basically what I'm thinking is that when the dump bed goes up this back portion comes down and as you can see I've actually already added this little hinge system that comes off of the dump bed pivot. So I'm gonna run a bar straight down from there that'll go through a little hitch support. And then when this comes up, that'll get lowered down, which will lower the hitch down. That'll allow enough room for a trailer to slide into place. Once the trailer's in place, you can just lower the dump bed. That'll pull the hitch up along with the trailer and lock it into place. After a couple different design modifications, I got something that worked pretty well and I was confident it'd do the trick picking up a trailer. The hardest part was figuring out how far back I needed this pivot point to be so it'd lower the hitch down far enough while also not making it stick out like a sore thumb. So you guys are getting a bonus on this video and that bonus is a sweet trailer. Now the sole purpose for this trailer is mainly just gonna be hauling the mini skiddy around. As you can see, I have a part of a mini skiddy right here. The mini skiddy is just constantly going through changes so that's why it's a whole torn apart. But also, being a trailer, you can haul whatever else you like with it. If you have some other little models that you want to haul around, you'll now have the capability to do so. But mainly, it'll be dimensioned to fit the Mini Skitty. The design for the trailer is actually going to be really simple, nothing too fancy, just, you know, a normal flatbed trailer. I'm thinking some, like, nice, decent-sized tires, and then a little ramp for the Mini Skitty to climb up on. I ended up trying just the standard fixed-in-place trailer leg, and it was okay, it was functional but definitely got caught on anything and everything. So threw that out the window quickly and insert super complicated trailer leg design process. This is what we ended up. Just look 
at this beauty. So basically the trailer will come into place, the hitch will pull it up, this little arm right here will get trapped under the hitch support, and then as it gets trapped it will get pulled down, which will pull the leg up and up and out of the way. Isn't that awesome? And then as you can see, I got a little counterweight here so that it always falls back down and the leg itself is pretty heavy. Now the ultimate test is to actually try loading the mini skiddy onto the trailer. But as you can see here, I made these little tiny diamond shaped extrusions that are pretty grippy and the mini skiddy can climb on top of, though I will admit it takes a fair bit of practice to get it to go up on there straight as it likes to hop around. But I also would like to say once more that this is not gonna be the dedicated hauling setup. I will be making a dedicated mini semi truck 3D printed model that'll be what's actually intended to haul all of these. And we'll have more power. It'll feature two of these Phoenix batteries so you'll be able to haul further and faster because you'll have more voltage. It'll also feature 500 RPM motors rather than 300 and two of them at that. So it should be a lot more powerful and be really great for hauling these little projects around whether it's just from one side of the room to the other or across your desk. So just keep that in mind. Now, just like with the mini dump truck, the next project will be purely based off of your guys' comments. So if you have a piece of construction equipment that you'd really like to see come to life in this mini 3D printed format, make sure to comment it down below because whatever piece of equipment or vehicle has the most comments will likely be the next project. And finally, the next video will be a step-by-step -step build video on how to actually assemble this mini dump truck. So if you're interested in building one, make sure to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on that build video.